We were all warned, but few listened. As Earth's population passed seven billion souls in a climate of global disasters, civil wars, and international military tension, nations sought to control the planet's dwindling resources. World governments introduced legislation to track and control the people, often bringing false charges against those who would call them to account. It is claimed that ancient Bible prophecies warned about this time, a series of events that would change our world forever. Hey, Susie. Cooler than a better cool thing. You? Yeah, no, to the grind. You know how it is. Busy, busy. I have information for you. What have you got for me? Ah, ah. What about that date we talked about? That date you spoke about. That date you always speak about. I could be on the next flight over there. Just say the word. Oh, just save your money. But I want to find out your secret, Susan. The real juicy Stop one. Stop it, you're going to make me crash this car. One of these days, Susie, you'll give in. And when you do, I'll be waiting. Cut to the chase. What have you got for me? I've had a tip-off. There's a heavy Federal Force activity near you tonight. Some of the big boys' vehicles have been spotted there. In Edinburgh? Close. Bonnie Bridge. How can you know all this stuff when you're hundreds of miles away in Gothenburg? I'm good, right? Yeah, you've got something. I'll give you that. Amongst all that oddness. We'd make a great team, Susie. Me with all my connections, you with your investigative skills. Imagine what our children will be like. Bye, Lubert. Hey, wait. I'll text you the coordinates. Minister of Defense Paul Hellyer, who claims that there are some four species of extraterrestrial that the government is aware of, some of whom they are already working with. 
<laughs> now he says that we should be friends with them and denigrate Stephen Hawking for warning us about them. I mean, what? In tonight's show, we're talking about UFOs, biometric implants, religious wars, and who exactly is the Federal Protection Force protecting? Anna Carter, you have a comment regarding government cover-up? They have no right to do this. People have a right to know. These UFO sightings are frightening. And what's all this? I've been looking at it on the internet about these FEMA camps. Concentration camps, more like. And these coffins that are being produced. And the fact that the, that the government's stocking up on ammunition at the same time as telling people they no longer have the right to own guns. And I want to say that the government has no right telling us how much food we can store in our homes. If any government officials are listening out there tonight, uh, maybe you could shed some light on this for us, huh? What is really going on here? What do they take us for? How much more are we going to take of it? Yeah, we'll call her. We could debate that subject until the cows come home, but really I don't think it's going to make any difference. This is Danny Mac, and you're listening to The Danny Mac Show on Late Night Radio Free Broadcast. You're listening to The Danny Mac Show on Radio Free Broadcast. Okay, so Jerusalem is in the headlines again. Uh, Israeli politicians causing problems by praying on the Temple Mount. Muslims going crazy, threatening all-out war again. Guys, guys, come on, uh, enough already. What will our visitors from outer space think? <laughs> so we have our next caller online, Graham Calder from Glasgow. Hi there, Graham. Hey, Harry. What do you make of all well, this? A bunch of kids still wiping each other off. Can the Jews not find another holy place? You know what these Muslims are like? They can't even share anything. So what's the answer then? Ban religion? See me? I'll a builder. I'd demolish the place. <laughs> the, uh, the Temple Mount or Israel? Ah, whatever gets the best results, though. Well, uh, that's uh, Radical Graham from Glasgow there, people. Jason, you're on. Hey, gorgeous. I'll show you some real extraterrestrial action. Thank you, and you're on the air. Oh, well, come on up. Yeah, I don't think so, hon. Sonia from Edinburgh, you're on. I want to talk about the UFO sightings. The ones over the, uh, the Dome of the Rock? Yeah, I mean, it's not like this is the first time they've been if seen. If the FPF has their way, it'll be the last. They've been requisitioning every piece of footage out there. What did you tell her, Maria? Who? Who are you? What do you want? You know who we are, Maria. What did you say to Susan Ashley? Please don't harm her. We know her father communicated with you. The, the last time, the last time I saw Jack, it was at his funeral. But you know more about that than I do. We know he sent you an encryption key. What key was on that key? What did Jack want you to see? And what did you tell Susan? I don't know what you're talking about. Jack and I, we, we often exchange theories about quantum physics. But that was all it was. Innocent conversation. I don't know what you want. Don't tell us what we want to know, I am telling you. I don't know what you want. I want to know what the FPF are trying to cover up. They keep saying these aren't visitors from another planet or that it's another hoax, but it's happening all too often. And why do they keep appearing over the Dome of the Rock? Well, maybe because it's the most contentious piece of real estate in the world. Now, the FPF released a statement saying the only way to combat crime and terrorism is by increasing surveillance. I've got Colin Shepard on line four who'd like to comment on this. Hi there, Colin. Where are you from? Hi, Danny. I'm from the Federal Protection Force. <laughs> right. Can I just say that we still live in a democracy, and it was agreed in Davos that the Federal Protection Force would be the face of our global government. Now, I know how you feel about us on the show. But our remit is simply to protect the people, reduce crime, and uphold the public good. We're tracked through our credit cards, mobile phones, computers. 
And now you're telling us to get ready for biometric chip implants? Isn't that taking things a little bit too far? Danny, listen. If people have done nothing wrong, they have nothing to fear. <sighs> I don't know what you want. Death Atlas sent you a sophisticated encryption key. You attempted to access to a classified FBF network with that key. What did he tell you? And what did you tell Susan? Jack was doing research into portals. He he wanted some help with his computations. Gateways into interdimensional travel. Um, I wrote a paper about it years ago about locations around the world in UFO What did you do with the key, Maria? What do you know about the portal? We're not interested in people's private lives. Our only interest is in maintaining order. Yeah, yeah, we heard. Uh, protecting people and reducing crime, right? You say that like it's a bad thing. The FPF are simply trying to promote a way of peace, love good, and love your neighbor. That's the only way to world peace. And you really think that's achievable? Believe me, we are trying to root out terror wherever it hides. Increasing people's security just goes hand in hand. Who doesn't want to live in a safer, kinder world? I hear you, Colin. But that safer, kinder world comes at a pretty big price. And on that happy note, tonight's conversation will continue where we left off on Susan's Secrets, the vlog that's not afraid of the truth. You've been listening to The Danny Mac Show. Stay safe, people. You've been listening to The Danny Mac Show on Radio Free Broadcast, the voice of the people. Hi, you've reached Susie's voice. Wait Government for that beat. Susan, please get back to me. The controversial human biometric implant. Jerry, will you get me a cab, hon? <laughs> Sorry, doll, I haven't seen it, but I'll be free in a couple of hours if you want company. <laughs> By the way, there's a guy down to the bar been looking for Susie too. In fact, he was in here last night. Right, I'll go speak to him. Hey, I'll have my usual down there, all right? Don't worry, I'll be looking out for you. Hi there, I, uh, I understand you're looking for Susan Ashler. I'm, I'm Danny Mackett. Hi. Hi there, my name's Adrian Dobson. My wife listens to your radio show. <laughs> I was actually looking for Susan Ashler. She's a friend of my wife. Susan's actually on assignment at the moment, but um, since we work together, m maybe I could help you in the meantime? I really hope you can. Four days ago, Wednesday night, I was preparing a meal for the strong police presence outside the FPF court this morning as Alphonse Benjamin, dubbed the Cyberman, was convicted of crimes against the state. In the kitchen, Benjamin darling. claims he uncovered evidence of proposals for population control Hi, darling. Hello. How was the date, Raj? Thank you. Um, yeah, it was okay, thank you. Something smells nice. Jack has made something rather special, darling. This looks like it's been round the block. Looks like it's from Jack Ashler. I thought he was dead. I've never really paid much attention to all that my Maria is involved in. All this end of the world nonsense. I just think there's something to do with that letter that caused her to go back out that night. That was the last time I saw her. Oh, oh shit. Sarah has lost its court battle to stop a new brand of genetically modified seed from entering the marketplace. Brian you won't believe it. The bloody oven's not working. Can you hear me? I said, the bloody oven's gone. We're going to have to get a takeout. Aid, look, something's happened at the shop. I've got to go and sort it what, out. What, no? I'm really sorry. Oh, yeah. come on. Look, I'll Maria, get the meal on the way. It can wait till the morning. I'll get your usual. Sorry. I'll get my bloody usual. I'm sick of my bloody usual. When she didn't come back for dinner, I called her mobile and got a message telling me that her number was no longer in service. I didn't know what to do. I called the police and they told me they would have to wait several days before they could investigate. I know that she's not left me on anything. 
All this stuff is where it should be. Adrian, is there any reason that your wife could be perceived as a threat to Homeland Security at all? Is she part of any groups or organizations that could be viewed as suspect? A threat to Homeland Security. Does she have contact with anyone who could be part of a group or network that might draw attention to itself? Does she visit websites suggesting that she disagrees with government policies? Has she ever marched for any causes? My wife runs a cafe bookshop for religious types. I mean, they're harmless. We're not talking terrorists here. I don't know what's happened to Maria, but I do know that there is a government policy for containment of individuals who can be seen as subversives, and it's been happening everywhere. You seriously can't tell me that you think for one moment they would arrest my wife on the basis of something Adrian, so it, trivial. Just hear me out, all right? There are a lot of crazy people out there who feel compelled to destroy other people's lives, and, and of course they should be locked away. But at the same time, it's been coming to the attention of many watchers like Susan and myself that there are also a lot of harmless people like Maria this is who my wife end up being about. branded as terrorists too when their crime is only that they have an opinion. I just need someone to talk to. Someone I can trust. Adrian, someone, I, anyone. I can't make any promises, but look, as soon as I've spoken with Susan, we will definitely look into this for you, okay? Look, put your number in there. I'll send you a text once I've seen Susan. In the meantime, just keep your head down till we find out what this is all about, okay? <laughs> Thank you. It'll be all right. I promise. Susie, you home? Susie? Hi, you've reached Susie's phone. Wait for that beep. Hey, Susan Secrets. Is there some secret guy I don't know about? Call me. This your stepdaughter. It doesn't seem that long ago that I was burying Jack. You say her car went off the road. She'd been drinking. Toxicology report showed a large amount of alcohol in the system. I think she must have fallen asleep at the wheel. Hopefully it was sudden. Her personal effects. I'm sorry, Veronica. At 10am this morning, government officials met to discuss the controversial topic of biometric human implants and the need for tighter security in the country. Paul Erickson of the campaign group BioFree ID said that the government did not have the right to implement such an action and encouraged people to reject the proposal. FPF representative Mel Djokovic said that the public was now ready to accept the unavoidable need for enhanced security measures. The British Chancellor of the Exchequer has once again warned the government.
time to embrace the United World Bank is now. Failure to comply with the latest round of regulations will take the country into an even deeper economic collapse. And after a long-running court battle, human rights activist Judy Reynolds has been found guilty and charged with provoking insurgency against the state. This is Derek Summers. This is Veronica's phone. Please leave a message. Hi, Veronica, it's Danny. Um, I just got your message. I'll, I'll be right over. See you soon. <sighs> Come on. Hi, doll. Hey, Ed, it's Danny. Um, look. Who's ever turned up last night? No, she never came in. Do you? But she'd been sober for a year. You no, know, it wasn't the first time she'd slipped up. The last time was just after Jack died. I was looking forward to the company. I got a call, a friend with marital difficulties. Susan insisted I go. I came back early. I could tell she'd been drinking. Oh, she begged me not to tell you. She didn't want to let you down. You know, it's such a horrible, cunning disease. It lies dormant, waiting for the right emotion to come along and set it free. Fear. Rage, grief. Poor oh, girl. And to have your mother kill herself, your father to die so soon after. And can you imagine? Oh, I don't blame her for going off the rails. Lise gave me this. You knew her better than anyone. I want you to have it. Where did it happen? Near Bonnie Bridge. I've been trying to call you, but I can't get through. There's something big going on. I've just followed the security van. I'm not exactly sure where we are right now. From the outside, it does look like some kind of industrial site. I'm going to see what's inside.
uh, black coffee, please. Sure. Can I sit here? Sure. Danny Makovich, Detective Inspector Brian Farrow. Can I ask a few questions? How'd you know I was here? Stupid question. You know everything about everyone, right? That's FPF. I'm police. But we do have some of the same toys. What I do know is you're 28, born in San Francisco, studied law at Edinburgh University, went on to become a civil liberties lawyer, part-time civil rights campaigner. Can't say I've met a civil rights DJ before. Can't say I have either. I don't like to see injustice. People have a right to be informed. No law against that yet, is there? I was sorry about your friend. When did you last see her? Saturday. During the day. How was her mood? Fine. She wasn't depressed? Worried about anything? No. Can I ask what she was working on? Susan was an investigative journalist. She worked on a lot of different things. I really couldn't say. When did she slip off the wagon? She didn't. I understand this is difficult, but her blood alcohol level was way off the chart when she crashed. Excuse me. Farrow. Okay. I'm really sorry, something's come up. I would like to talk to you again, though. I'll be in touch. Police? <laughs> yeah, right. Veronica? The police are looking for you. Um, yeah. Uh, I spoke to them. Oh. Well, did you tell them what you thought was wrong with Susan? Um, uh, yeah, I, t I told them there was nothing. I do wish we'd known what was going on inside her head. We did have a really weird conversation on Saturday. I didn't really know what to make of it. Oh? No, no, it's nothing. Danny, please, just think. Any little piece of evidence might help us. We need to piece together what happened. I don't think this has anything to do with the crash, though, but... She was reading this book. Hey. Hey, you have here. Good. Uh, 
Um, Mom, I'll call her later. You should really take your mum's call. You should never be too busy for that. You don't know how long you'll have her for. Yeah. So what's this? From Maria Dobson. She's an old colleague of Dad's. She runs the religious bookshop. I just wanted to have a chat with her about these alien sightings, that's all. Did she make you buy one of her books? No, she didn't. <laughs> she actually gave me it. You don't seriously believe all that. I don't know, there's just something about what she said. It really made sense to me. Susan, centuries ago, it was believed that aliens or supernatural visitors came to warn us through biblical prophets about events that would affect our very existence. According to the records, there were two types of visitors. Sounds crazy, I know, but hear me out. Mm. So in the book of Genesis, it mentions fallen angels who came to Earth to breed with... breed with humans. The result, hybrids, part angel, part human. People believe that ancient mythology was based on these creatures. They taught mankind arts, science, technology. Believe me, Danny, I thought Maria had lost the plot, but she was clearly convinced about something. You have to understand, there are hundreds of prophecies, all interconnected in a complex pattern, <laughs> most of which have already happened, yet people are too caught up with their own pursuits to even care. When these spiritual beings corrupted uh, human DNA, God had no option but to wipe out this genetic mix with a great flood. Scholars believe that these two worlds will collide and mix again. Susan, in his research work on portals, your father believed they're already here. Do you think she told anyone else about these religious theories? I don't think so. Um, look, I'm really sorry, Veronica, but I, I've got a splitting headache. Do you, do you mind if I lie down for a few minutes? No, no, please. Look, Danny, why don't you stay the night? I could really do with the company. Yeah, me too. Thanks. Thanks. Jenny? Yeah? You all right? Have you got everything you need? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Veronica. I, I'm fine. All right. Good night. Good night.
car. My phone's been jammed. Danny is starting. They're rounding people up. They're going to silence everyone who opposed their plans. We need to get out of here. I have to go, but I'll see you soon. <laughs> Detective Inspector Farrow, can I ask a few questions? What do you think? Was Susan Ashler in here Saturday night? Susan? Can't remember offhand. How? She died. Susan? How? Driving while intoxicated. Susan? No, no way. No. I mean, no way. I mean, I'm not one for, for promoting the absence of alcohol. There's not many people who have their first year sober party in a bar. Did she ever slip up? Just a year before this picture was taken, um, when Dad remarried that snooty. Anyway, a flatmate, Danny. She got back in track. You claim these Bible prophecies are warnings. What are you warning us about? People will look for anybody or anything to save them. Governments will not know what to do. Scriptures tell us there will be fear and anxiety among the nations, none of them knowing the way out, concerning the environment, concerning the economy, concerning strategic threat. These things are going to converge and create a situation that will have people so afraid they will look for a savior. But instead of looking to the real savior, who is Jesus and his return, there will be a false Christ who comes before him. This is Antichrist. Pop culture is helping setting the stage for this. Not by any design of Hollywood, but by people who become so absorbed yeah. in day-to-day -day life, their own careers, yeah, their own he, he's talking plans, about their own marital plans, some of the same stuff that was in that book Susan had. become oblivious to things eternal. One the religious uh, not gay for. Jesus compared this to the days of Noah. People would be so... You know, these people with their conspiracy theories about the government staring out of fear. Think outside of the parameters. Conspiracy theories. Civil liberties. I need to show you something. This was on Susan's phone. Susan's phone? Sure. I think this might change your mind. I'm sure there's an explanation for this. An explanation? Veronica, people need to know about this. They have to understand what's been happening. Illegal immigrants. Subversives. There are children in there. Oh, Danny, you've heard the stories. The terrorists are using women and children to escape detection. People are capable of terrible things, no matter how innocent they look. Yeah, but Maria Dobson? Maria Dobson? Maria Dobson was working with Jack. She was a quantum physicist, working at the cutting edge of science. The highest government clearance. Yeah, I know. How do you know she's not responsible for Jack's death? How do you know anything? Well, what makes you think that you could possibly know more than the people who are in charge? I just don't think Susan would be doing this otherwise. showing this to anyone. So what, I'm just supposed to sit back and do nothing? Taking a step back and being sensible is the best thing you can do. Well, let's get ready.
latest biochip implant that was first introduced into the private sector continues to meet violent opposition from extremist groups claiming that there is a hidden agenda behind the scheme. Colin Shepard from the State Office told reporters that keeping people safe is our mission. Jerusalem is once again at the heart of international conflict. At 8 o'clock this morning, GMT, the aircraft carrier USS Narvak joined the growing battle group in the Mediterranean. Coming at a time when the Federal Union is still to announce a new president, the Council has asked for calm over the current crisis. However, military hardware continues to pour into the region as Israel prepares for war. Concerns over the use of holographic technology. Oh, yeah, what did past us, mate? So did Vaz close, James. In this guy. Nah, I can't say it half. Look again. We've got over a thousand people a night in this joint. Never seen the guy. Have you seen him? Okay. I'm watching you. Sean Kaplan of Integrity has recently been asked to step down as managing director over claims of financial Don't ask. Conduct. Trust me, you don't want to know. On a lighter note. She looks beautiful. If only she had had the implant. It would have detected the gene that made her an alcoholic. You don't seriously believe that a biochip would have saved you? It's progress, Danny. Why is everyone so frightened by what they don't understand? I understood Susan. I just don't believe this was an accident. Well, in that case, we both better be very careful. of holographic technologies being used by government officials and religious figures to represent themselves at meetings is being voiced by the independent watchdog Integrity. However, the World Council for Religious Affairs has welcomed the new technologies as it can be used as an aid to worship no matter where in the world you are. Sean Kaplan of Integrity has recently been asked to step down as managing director. Hey Danny, these files you sent. Is this a secure line? Sure. When have you ever known me not to use one before? You want to tell me what's going on here? Have you shown the files to anyone else? No. What is all this? Susan's dead. That was the last thing she recorded. I, I sent it to you for safekeeping. But I just spoke to her a few days ago. She had a car accident. At least that's what they're saying. You think her death is suspicious? Well, it's too convenient. I mean, one minute she's investigating the FPF taking these people, and, and the next she starts drinking again and crashes her car. I, I don't think so. What proof do you have? I don't know. It, it's all just a bit too weird. Look at this. She'd been speaking to someone who believed that the increase in extraterrestrial or supernatural activity had been prophesied as something that would happen at the end. The end of days, I guess. There's other stuff too. These biometric chip implants and newborns, she said it's like they're the mark of the beast. Whatever that means. It, I don't know. It, it just all seems connected to the FPS. I 
didn't hear the day. So Susie's dead. And the bloody Gestapo were in here like the little boy lost in the end of the bar. What's going on, dog? I'll explain later. Hey, Ed, can I use your storeroom for a couple of minutes? So, yeah. Thanks, Ed. <laughs> Ashley was killed in a car accident on Sunday night. A few days earlier, she'd visited Maria. Adrian, I know where Maria is. Just watch and listen. I don't understand. What's happening? anywhere near the police right now, okay? The FPF are after you too. They've been here already. Hold on. That's not what we agreed. It was it was 28, if you can remember. Yeah. Uh-huh. Call you back. Shit. These are the keys to my flat, okay? You need to move right now. The scary guys with the guns are back in force. Use that door there that takes you out into the street. Will you get yourself into it all? I'm glad I caught you. 
I've been looking into this prophecy stuff. How much do you really know? Not that much, only what Susan told me. This stuff is freaking me out, man. A one world government and economic system that controls power and food and people, of course. An increase in natural and man-made disasters killing millions. Attacks on Israel, increasing the unrest in the Middle East. A push towards a one world religion for peace. And there's lots more, but it's too close to the truth for my liking. Yeah, okay, I hear you, but the mark of the beast? I mean, come on. If the bio-implant can house an economic market system, that could be the mark. And without it, you couldn't buy or sell or get healthcare. You'd be an outskirt of society, an outcast, until you saw sense and gave in, or got sick and died. Okay, but I, I still don't see what any of this has to do with extraterrestrial activity or the prophecies. Danny, Bonnie Bridge is the UFO capital of the world. Some of the crazies on the show say there's a portal there. You've heard about the ancient text describing the angels ascending and descending Jacob's ladder above Israel. I guess I remember some story from the Bible when I was a kid, sure. Listen to this. The book of Genesis also mentions fallen angels. These were the sons of God who were attracted to women on earth. <laughs> they left their rightful abode and impregnated human women, creating a hybrid, half angel, half human. The Bible warns that something similar will happen again in the last days. Think of what these beings could bring, the technological advances. Do you really think the World Council would say no to a proposition like that? Gareth Bell from the Action Against Human Engineering said that the bio-implant was dangerous and it had been designed to manipulate... Hi, this is Eddie. If this is my ex, I've left the country. Anyone else? Leave a message after the beep. Hey, Eddie, it's Danny. Um, look, about... About Susie's funeral, um, I'll see you there, okay? Um, I promised Veronica that I would head up a little bit earlier so that I could meet her ahead of time. Faro? Okay. Jesus said in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. The person who believes in me even though he dies, will live. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house. Jesus goes on to say, for I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Philippians chapter 1, God's power, citizenship is in heaven. And we need to await the Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in 1 Corinthians 15, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised and perishable, and we will be changed. First Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven, the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forevermore. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. Amen. Danny, you have to come with me. What? I'm under Danny? arrest? I'll explain everything in the car. Are you for real? I'm burying my best friend. It'll have to wait. It won't. Thank it's for your own sake. I promised Veronica I'd be here for her, and that's what I'm doing. Susan was killed. The FBF tried to make it look like an accident. What? A tox report was tampered with. A bottle was forced to map. You have to trust me. We have to go now. Don't look back. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anti-surveillance. It'll jam the software by some I don't understand what's going on. People need to know the truth. We'll see you at the house.
my grandparents' place. Worked all the days here. I used to play in that field as a child. They grew crops, so the government said they couldn't. It was illegal. They staggered on till the land repeal act came in, by which time it was worthless. Won't they find us here? Perimeter cloaking system. Protect us from prying eyes. I sure hope so. The FPF picked up Adrian Dobson on his way to your place last night. The barman was getting too close to you and Susan. He became a threat. If Eddie was such a threat just for knowing me, then why haven't they picked me up? They were about to. You just saw that. They've left you this long because they're waiting for me to make contact. They think I've got something they need. Something to give to you. Sorry, it has to be you. You recognize this guy? Yeah, he was at the Bean Inn w with you. And today at the cemetery. Major Kishnik Yelanovic. He's responsible for Susan's death, Jack Ashler's first wife's so-called suicide. Eddie the barman, Maria, and Adrian Dobson. Gone. You were next. You remember this? Yeah, it's the UFO over the Dome of the Rock. But that was a hoax, right? Well, the FPF control the media. Why should we doubt them? The exact same thing happened over Bonnie Bridge four nights ago. These events are becoming harder for the FPF to keep passing off as hoaxes. People are scared. But anyone who speaks or spreads theories about the New World Council tend to disappear and end up in a camp labeled an insurgent. <laughs> Where were you when my show was struggling parading? This is serious, Danny. The FPF manipulate any situation to get what they want. They use anything at their disposal, even the innocent. Back then, I was a commander in the FPF. Thank you so much for booking this. You are so welcome. You have no idea how much it means to me. Mm, I think I do. <laughs> We're gonna miss the plane. No. <laughs> Leave it, Brian. Please. Farrow? Okay. I'll be there as soon as I can. Don't. Just don't. I have to go. I'm sorry. This is supposed to be our family holiday. A chance for you to spend time with us. It's only one day. I'll be in the next flight tomorrow, I promise. You're full of promises. None of which you ever keep. This is my job. I'm doing it for you, for all of us. You'll never change. You're incapable. Oh dear. Airport, please. The phone call was regarding an emergency FPF meeting. The FPF had received intelligence about the flight. They chose to do nothing about it. It served their purpose, helped create a culture of fear through terrorism. If they could convince people they could stamp it out, make the world a safer place, people would trust them. It worked. Eradication of religious fundamentalist groups now became a priority. We were given intelligence about a cell. We were told there were suicide bombers, viral infection carriers, obstacles to human evolution. I gave the order to apprehend 
and detain them. Martha Dent predictably alluded to something where people would become so We were instructed to apprehend their leader, a retired Christian pastor. Intelligence said he preached a literal approach to biblical interpretation. This made him a fundamentalist, a danger to society. Know why you're here? I don't know why I'm here. You burst down our door, brutalized my folks, frightened the children, the women, we have a bell in the door, you know. You've been arrested for subversive behavior, preaching radical religious propaganda. What we were doing when you gate crashed my little cottage was simply having a time of Bible study and a time of fellowship. Yes, brainwashing people with your extremism. That's not true. The Bible is an open book. It's not imposed on anybody. It's a book of hatred and bigotry. There's not a shred of evidence to suggest that we're either subversive, that we're bigots, or that we're filled with hate. The central theme of the Bible, as we've said, is the fact that Christ died. Why did he die? Not only because he loved us, but that his Christian people would exhibit love to others. Where's the love spread by religious extremists carrying out bomb attacks, all in the name of God? It's an insult. To make that an illustration of Christianity. You were found with religious propaganda intended to be distributed with the sole purpose of turning people against the state. Family plan. They would become oblivious. People would be... by fanaticism, you can't even consider change. The bio-implant is designed to solve our problems, to fight disease. You're soaked into a system that's absolutely corrupt. I can see why you're so against it. It's gonna help us monitor suspects like you. You have no place left to hide. Man, you're naive. If you don't accept the fact that human nature is rotten, if you can't see that, if you think that by inserting chips or by some form of indoctrination, you're going to make the world's problems go away. Man, you're a lost cause. Let me tell you something, preacher. My wife and child were blown up in a flight by religious fanatics like you. If people had accepted the technology the first time around, when it first became available, instead of fighting it with outdated religious theories, my family would still be here today. trying to give you pious platitudes. But is that any good reason because some mad character... One of your group, the young man who ran from the house, he got himself killed rather than be captured and questioned. What was he trying to hide? Presumably you shot him in the back. You realize that he probably was running back 
trying to escape your thugs so that he could protect his wife and children. Don't talk to me about the murder of innocent people. Well, no doubt you'll be taking me to court, but I have to tell you something. It's the wrong person that's going to court. You're a bunch of thugs. They shoot us the prisoner, not me. Interview terminated, 2314. He was right. I was the terrorist. I had done exactly the same thing to those innocent people that had been done to me. I was assigned a new major, the first of a breed of super soldier whose DNA had been altered. The FPF were developing a new army to combat the rising threat from the Far Eastern superpowers whose numbers are rising daily. I did my own research into the subject of DNA manipulation. What I found was disturbing. I told the FPF I needed time, that I'd come back too soon. I was burned out. What I needed was answers about me. What I found was Maria and the remnant. Like the preacher, they knew what I'd done, but they forgave. I was still trying to forgive myself. I told the FPF I'd be more useful working the streets where I'd be close to people, able to root out insurgents. So I was demoted to police detective. I came back a different person. My eyes finally opened to the truth, but knowing all the time, I was being watched. So who are these remnant? The Bible refers to them as the wise who will understand. Oh, these prophecies again. Ever since I heard about them, I've had nothing but trouble. My best friend has died. My life's been turned upside down. And, and there are people out there talking about alien visitations, DNA manipulation, fallen angels, Armageddon. Don't you think it all sounds just a little bit nuts? No. Oh, there are 100 prophecies that seem to have already come to pass. This could be seen as a warning to this generation that the end of the world is coming, as we know it. Uh, but it hasn't happened yet. I, I mean, look at the Mayan calendar. How many people believed that was going to be the end of the world? You sound just like Susan. Look, freak weather patterns, an increase in natural disasters, earthquakes, ethnic wars, a crashing economy, people becoming spiritually deluded, allowing a great man of peace to step onto the world stage, the Antichrist. And what about the alien visitors? I, I suppose they've been foretold as well, right? <laughs> According to sources, they've already come. But they're not our friends, Danny. Hungry. You drop all this on me and then you ask if I want a snack? You have a long journey ahead. Where to? I can't say, but you'll be safe. For how long? You're... Better forgetting about your life, Danny. The radio show, your friends, family. You can't talk to anyone. And you certainly can't go back to being Danny Mac. It's over. It's gone. Sorry. I don't have much in the way of provisions. Mom? Hey, sweetie, how are you? We've been trying to call you. Uh, I know, uh, I'm sorry, I've been kind of... I've been kind of busy. It's no excuse. How are you and Dad? Soup all right? Danny? Dad? Danny? I said, you're not a young man anymore, but you know your dad, right? Yeah. Is he there? No, I'm sorry. He's right to the store. How about I get him to call you? But that'd be great, Mom, but I, uh... Danny? Danny? Where? It's a long story. I'll try and be in touch. Danny, what's wrong? Nothing. It, that's fine. Danny, there's something wrong. Sweetie, tell me, please. Danny! I gotta go. I I'll try and call when I can. I, I love you both, Mom. Bye. That was a mistake. Inside.
This is what the FPF are after. Keep it safe. What's on it? Jack Ashley sent it to Maria before he died. She gave it to me for safekeeping before she... When Maria played this, it showed up in the FPF network and triggered an alarm. If you play through this encryptor, you'll be safe. You have to show this to the world, Danny. Let them know. I, I don't understand. You will. Once people realize their fears are real, they'll wise up. They'll refuse to take the biochip and find their escape. Why lay all this on me? Because people like you. They'll listen to you, Danny. You want me to broadcast this? I, mean, I have to leave my old life behind, remember? How am I supposed to show people? You'll find a way. Besides, we have a Scandinavian friend. Come on. Didn't take them long. They're just looking. not picking anything up. I think we've gone. Safe. I still think you've got the wrong person. Promise me you'll make us on the key available to everyone. I'll do my best. And use the encryptor, otherwise they'll find you. My friends will take care of you. You're not coming? You'll be safe. We have to go now. Come with me, please. Bye, Danny.
Danny, what's happening? We're going further down the coast to a bigger boat. We need to get you below the school. Danny, we're just leaving. Can I get you anything? Um, uh, no, no thanks. I I'm okay. Excuse me, you don't have a chance of a laptop I could use, do you? And on tonight's show, we're talking about the recent UFO activity in Gothenburg. Some are saying there are visitors from outer space sent here to control the World Council. As we know, Sweden has not yet joined. Is this party politics or is it a hoax? Stay tuned to find out. A first caller on the line, Andre Crystal. You're live on air. Hello, caller. You have a theory on the sightings? Maria, I'm sending you this encrypted key, but I'm being watched, so need to keep this message short. By the time you get this, I will likely be dead and they will be here among us. I'm downloading a highly classified document. It's a list of people they have chosen. Royalty, politicians, religious leaders, military figures, writers, media moguls. They will be sending couriers to travel through the portals to locations around the world, each carrying an encrypted data device that will be used to assimilate all binary systems. It's the most frightening control of resources and people you could imagine. Send the file to those you trust to share this information. Remember, they will close down the web if they suspect anything. We're coming to the end of the world as we know it. Okay, I'll do the radical stuff. Do you want to expand on your theory for the listeners? We need to keep them guessing as long as we can. Maria, I fear for Susan and her friend. You need to warn them. Trust no one. My first wife was murdered. It was no suicide. I now know who was responsible. Maria, you need to re... They're not from other planets. They're from the spiritual dimension. The Bible prophecies explain. The World Council will elect their new leader soon. The prophet Daniel foretold it. He will win the hearts and minds of the people. He will speak peace and use the world's faiths to gain prominence. His image will cause the abomination of desolation in Jerusalem. We've been following you for quite some time. How long do you think would have let you go on like this? You have something that belongs to us. I don't know what you're talking about. I was hoping this wouldn't be necessary. Portals are open, Lubert. The storm is gathering. 
Time is running out to find a way of escape. Only the wise will understand. something developed and expanded by Jesus, where people would become so absorbed with day-to-day -day life, their own careers, their own family plans, their own marital plans, their own ambitions, when events that they were warned of began to transpire, when they should have been getting ready to escape, they were just so engrossed in their own world, they were not prepared except for the faithful remnant. History has been plagued by anti-Semitism towards the Jews. This hatred of the Jews, we hate you. Jews were persecuted in every nation in which they lived. It's not even logical. And it is predicted in the Torah of the Jews, in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and Leviticus chapter 26, that these things would happen to the Jews. I will take the children of Israel from among the nations and will gather them from every side and bring them back into their own land. Now, the point of this passage is there's never been a point in history where the Jews have been gathered back to the land of Israel and given back their nationhood, except in 1948. And though we were facing a major catastrophe, someone from above had other plans. And within six days, we managed to overcome our enemy and to reunite Jerusalem, the capital of the state of Israel but the capital of God in the world, as was announced 3,000 years ago by King David. You brought people from all corners of the earth, speaking dozens of languages into one country, and you revived this beautiful sleeping beauty uh, into uh, a language of use. In the last days, the ancient Jewish currency of the shekel will be revived. And guess what? Nearly 3,000 years ago, the prophet Isaiah predicted that water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. Once Israel became a nation in 1948, there was an intense national program of national reforestation, literally fulfilling this prophecy. You don't find so much agricultural land recovered from a desert wilderness anywhere else in the Middle East. The mountains will drip with sweet wine and fill the face of the world with fruit. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes, signs in the sun, moon and stars. Nations will be in anguish at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Men will faint from terror apprehensive of what is coming on the world. Such things must happen. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure, Whole denominations that at one time were biblically based and held to a biblical morality, having gone into everything from not simply religious apostasy, but even moral debauchery and a fundamental lack of financial ethics. There will be a convergence of calamities, environmental, economic, political, and strategic taking place. In desperation, the world will look to a political leader and a religious leader, quite possibly being all things to all people, the Antichrist. The scriptures speak of a new kind of currency, some would suggest in the form of some kind of a microchip, on the forehead or on the right hand by which people will be able to buy and sell, but not be able to buy and sell without it. The essential technology already exists. Well, the book of Revelation tells us that will be a final currency. We are going to see Persia, that is Iran, emerging as a strategic threat to Israel's existence. We are told by Ezekiel, Russia, Turkey, and certainly the nations of Soviet Central Asia will come into some kind of a military confederation with Iran in order to invade Israel 
leading up to some kind of a terrible conflict. Israel is situated along the Syro-African Rift, the fault line that separates between Europe and Africa. The prophets talk about how, in the end of days, an earthquake will split Mount Olives in half, and the waters of Jerusalem, like these below us, will both flow to the Dead Sea and to the Mediterranean. The Torah obligates us. Make me a sanctuary and I will dwell amongst you. And this is exactly what we are doing. We are trying to build the house of God, the third temple. In the very first moment, we actually begin. It should take between a year to two years to build. Despite the desires of many people over the centuries, really, to reopen it, it still remains closed, as Ezekiel prophesied it would. It's entirely visible today, again, opposite the cleft in the Mount of Olives, overlooking the Kidron Valley, in the wall of Jerusalem on the east side of the old city. Some have speculated it's Sin, the ancient name for China. Be that as it may, it would have to cross the Euphrates River. Even as we speak, there is a dam in Turkey which could restrict the flow of the waters into the Euphrates that could literally make this particular prophecy happen. I'm not necessarily saying it must be China, but it doesn't leave too many other possibilities. We are specifically warned by Jesus that unless he returned, no human flesh would be saved. The human race would bring itself to the point of extinction. It was not possible, either strategically or technologically, up until the 1940s. But it's certainly possible now. The same as there were people who understood the events of the time in Daniel's day, there will be people in that character in the last days who will do the same thing they'll be able to understand. But we're warned by Daniel, none of the wicked will understand. We're also warned by Daniel, there will be an escape. And so the New Testament likewise teaches, when these events begin to unfold, at some point, there will be, for the righteous, a way of escape.